Welcome to the Harmony Ball Podcast. This is episode one. Episode one. I don't know if anyone will actually listen to it. I've never made a podcast before, but I know that I love barbershop quartet music, and I get the privilege to sing with some excellent barbershop quartet musicians, and I miss them terribly. And this podcast is me taking the opportunity to reach out to those folks say what's up to them, talk about the things we miss about this hobby, and get excited for when they come back. This show is brought to you by the Westminster Chorus, or I, something like that is what I say at the beginning. This is episode one, so remember, I don't know what I'm doing yet. But uh, yeah, you should uh, check out the Westminster Chorus's summer show coming up on Saturday, July 3rd, on the Barbershop Harmony Society's international virtual international this summer 2021 we will be featured on that show and now it's time for the interview with my friend jake tickner jake tickner is the base of the newfangled four and a real good person also he likes to play disc golf and he works at the beach so what's not to love about this wonderful beautiful human you need that yeah i'm i'm ready to rock whenever let me see all right well we're about to rock you ready here we go i'll do there's going to be an intro and it'll be like you know and we got today is Jake Tickner he's the bass of the Newfangled 4 and a yeah. good friend and uh, yeah and then it'll be like 3 2 1 so here we go 3 a 2 one hey jake hey derek how are you pretty great okay. pretty great on Thank this you. wednesday night here in long beach okay nice 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 yeah it's yeah. good i'm so happy to have you on the podcast because you're famous you know people know newfangled four people like that quartet <laughs> and they have watched the videos because your videos are yeah. there there's a lot of views on those videos somehow man they they gained traction they did i don't know famous <laughs> my, my friend make my friend made this joke when we were when we were let's see we were going through the stuff with the personnel change with ryan and she was like oh is, is like newfangled for done and i was like well we're not we're not done we're just you know going through some transition and she's like oh good i was so worried about what you were gonna tell your your uh all your high school fans you know like they're gonna know you're they're not you're not fake famous anymore <laughs> i was like fake famous awesome harley thank you oh i just gave her away <laughs> oops She'll be, she'll be uh, glad to know. She'll be glad to know about that. But Jake, I think it's kind of like the Velvet Underground, you know? You know that that rock band, the Velvet Underground? Mm, yeah, is it? I, I don't think I listen to their stuff. Please tell me more about them. Any, well, people often say that like nobody, the Velvet Underground wasn't like famous like, mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of things, but they were really inspirational. Like everyone that listened to the Velvet Underground like started a garage band in the 80s. And oh, okay, okay. they were very influential. So they were, yeah. But maybe they weren't like as famous as say like, you know, your your poisons, your quiet riots, your arrows, yeah. whatever, or, you know. Iron I, Maiden. I, I think Velvet Underground is a little bit earlier and more like 70s rock sort of deal. Maybe, you're, maybe they're not like the Strokes, but there would be no The Strokes without the Velvet Underground. <laughs> or Green no Day. The White Stripes or, or Green Day. You know, like the Velvet Underground is like a seminal like, rock mm. band that rock bands listened to and were inspired by and i feel like the newfangled four is like a seminal barbershop quartet that high school barbershop quartets listen to yeah we've certainly gotten that we've certainly gotten that and it's it's wild to think about that when we look at those views on those videos the view counts um you know that's largely thanks to the bhs for putting that out to the public you know when they started doing that i think they started doing that maybe in like 2010 or, or so maybe or maybe like 11 because i remember seeing or maybe it was no that's the westminster chorus i'm looking at the youtube the westminster chorus youtube like those choir of the world videos but 
I know that like VHS started like in 2011 or so because they had prestige up there and old school. And then, yeah, it's just a giant resource for people. And I don't think we would have the popularity uh, that we found uh, without that, without that resource of, of mass reach, you know, internet right mass reach. Right on. Yeah, YouTube is amazing, and it definitely spreads culture like wildfire. It is, it is. Good culture, and yes. Not so good culture. And bad culture. Barbershop is a good culture. Singing is good culture. It's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, group singing brings is... people together. It increases people's mental health and all yeah. that good stuff. And I feel like you know, just to underline it. Your quartet has made a significant contribution to youth barbershop music in the world and that's so awesome my friend i'm so happy that you guys did that. you know you, you've done it you've made you've become barbershop famous it's awesome <laughs> like there was that story that uh, justin was telling westminster rehearsal the other day where how like some of his like students will come up and be like do you have you ever or no they're not like do you know they're like have you ever heard of this really awesome right for dead that you fangled for and justin has to say yeah i think i've heard of them <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's like I've I've listened to them a few times. <laughs> yeah, Justin was he was definitely seminal in the beginning. You know, also oh, in like coaching us, he gave us a few little coaching sessions. Um, I remember when we were working on stuff like mistakes and Dinah. You know, some of our early stuff that was like. <laughs> So glad we were not singing that forever because those songs Jake, are hard. Uh, mistakes is fine, but the, I know it's a rivals tune or like the class. Yeah. Mistakes yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I told you lies. I was unwise. You let me know. I, I don't really. That's like an old song. And I, and I tried finding recordings of it and I, I have trouble. Isn't that funny? That, so certain songs that we sing as barbershoppers, like. What's another one? Like from the first hello. I'm pretty sure that was just written for barbershop. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Some of the yeah. barbershop canon is pretty, pretty close knit stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that, that's, that's hilarious. Um, but that's where we came from, you know, like and we, we were high schoolers. Yeah. Michigan Jake. Right. The Michigan, Michigan Jake. Michigan Jake. We yeah. would listen to that in Jackson's Toyota Corolla. Uh, <laughs> 2000 Toyota Corolla. I feel. Like cool, I feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's great, man. That's so cool. Like, um the, so you were gonna say as uh, high schoolers go ahead oh yeah like just we were those kids once you know listening to oc times <laughs> that was the first album that i ever had um barbershop album which one is and that which OC times? let's fly let's. let's fly yeah what's on that right the, the hits those are the hits man like love me um teddy bear come fly with me stormy weather I want you, I need you, I love you. I want you, I, ah, uh, no, that was actually on, that was later. That they, they put out a live cut of that at the end of like one of their, I think it was their, I think it was not the road, but it was the one before that. But and yeah, like, why? Like that's that like, spectrum. that's like borrowing from real time's catalog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's a good record. The, the, Cana the Canadian Kings of Swing. Oh, man. <laughs> Those guys are good at barbershop. I know that you love real time. I right? do you love, love real best. time. Oh, man. Yeah, that's, that's so one of your So much. I love I, real time. And I love real time, too. Yeah, you do. But you love, I remember you and Lane would talk about them a lot. And Lane was like a kid in a candy store when they came to uh, Tustin in 2016. For our listeners, Lane Aiken, tenor in mm -hmm. the chorus and in my quartet. The in song. your quartet. And previous quartets that I have sung in with yourself, Jake. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I thought about that. I thought we might go down that that memory lane a little bit tonight. We like, should. Oh, man. we. Totally, I don't know what you want to talk about. We can I'm talk here. about whatever. We're, okay, so basically, ba that's awesome. I, have a gr I just ate all my granola. That I, I went hiking yesterday in Point Reyes and I packed a bunch of granola and then I just got back, just got in the house, as you know, and then I was like, okay, snack, snack. Oh, that granola from yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> homemade? Homemade granola? I wish. Oh, okay. Oh, man. I wish I had a granola game like that. I mean, I definitely eat granola while wearing Patagonia in the... <laughs> 
fitness, but I'm not at make my own granola level yet. Okay. But yeah, the the B sides days, the B sides days. We definitely you, me, David Rakita, and Lane did a contest mm-hmm. hit at the district level. Mm-hmm. And that was fun. Those are good. In... Yeah, that was great. That was. Oh, when we sang in uh, Santa Cruz, right? Mm-hmm. We sang at the yeah, the sing for sing for your life youth event. Right. With that Pizzo. was that was with Pizzo. Mm-hmm. That was yeah, your. That gig. was a lot of fun. You got us that gig. I yeah, I don't know. Maybe I got you that gig because I, Jag or I'm not exactly sure how he landed that, but because that happened in the that happened before Newfangled Four, right? I think so. Yeah, well, because like it was like just in the in between times, <laughs> because I think it was like in 2012. Yeah, 12. I think yeah. Pretty sure, because yeah, because then the next year was 13. Well, we you know 2012 was also when like Newfangled Four was starting up, but yeah, I loved I loved that quartet. That was so was fun singing together. <laughs> oh, what did we sing? <laughs> <laughs> we sung, we sung so at the contest so i'm pretty sure because yeah because i just listened to those recordings recently because i found them i was transitioning oh, yeah. all my material yeah i can I'm shoot those over to you, you that into this podcast yeah you can oh baby a little post-production okay all right um yeah so i was transitioning all the stuff from my old laptop over to this one so i'm going through my recordings and i came across that cut first hello and the gas house gang song um oh yeah southern southern rose she's waiting with the southern, southern roses, roses. yeah was that the, right that's the name of the song yeah or i want to say wow what a chart so pretty. but that was so so fun and we had we had a you know we had a, we had a good run a couple months <laughs> we couple did months. <laughs> we did where the southern roses grow that's like gas house david wright like the the heart of that whole like uh like their champ year sort of stuff like mm-hmm. i think if i'm not mm-hmm. mistaken, i don't really i don't really know but i do i love gas house gang so much and uh i just that song i did get justin and lane and jim henry and i sang that tune at uh at toronto i think was heck yes oh man that must have been so much fun singing next to jim henry it was great and justin slotted every note somehow i don't know you knew that tune but (laughs) he just he just has that brain where it's like i'm pretty sure this note's coming up next and i've heard this enough times that i can just like that that baritone part actually i remember is very back and forth with the lead the entire time you're literally just swapping with the lead because I remember hearing David sing it with you, like listening to that recording. And I can hear Rakita just like. It's just like so strange. So strange. It's so strange. But oh, it's so Barbershop's so beautifully strange. That it is. It Sometimes is. I watch trios. Like I'm really into, uh, I was listening to um, <clears throat> this uh, bluegrass trio. Uh, with Sarah Watkins and Sarah Droz. And I don't remember the other woman who's in the band, but they have a, I think they won a Grammy maybe last year. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, like I'm always watching these trios, like these bluegrass trios and just I'm like, oh, I wish they had a baritone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's what makes it, a, you know, a bluegrass trio. You just you just got those those upper structure chords. I know, I know, but I just, those triads. Every once in a while, need. I'd like to hear a tune that has a mm-hmm. little bit, a little bit more. You know what? You know what's perfect for that? Hmm. Barbershop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, but I'm you know I'm on the like trying yeah to get, try and like get Fort Barbara uh-huh. a little bit more established in the popular canon sort yeah of thing because like it it kind of goes in and out of popular you know like the stuff mm-hmm. like the stuff that Barbershop pulls from a lot of some of it you know does move around the cycle like some yeah. songs do really really well move around the cycle in a beautiful way and like offer a lot of seventh opportunities yeah like like the song that masterpiece does sweet pea 
um, throwback. That's from Amos Lee. Do you listen to Amos Lee? I don't. Amos Lee. Okay. So you probably love him because he's got, you know, he's right up that folk Americana alley. And yeah, that's from him. And it's like, <laughs> it's just like basically like five foot two eyes of blue thing a little bit. Oh, yeah. Where, you know, it goes through the whole, the whole circle of this. Dig it. But Dig it. Wait, you said Sarah Jaros, right? Yeah, Sarah Jaros. Yeah, dude, I love her. Oh, man, so good. This stuff's so good. She's, yeah, she's got an incredible voice. Yeah. And songwriting and, yeah, that, that album that has green lights, or not green lights, but, oh, man. It's just great. I don't know. I can't think of it right now. Well deserved, Sarah Juros. Mm-hmm. Well deserved. You have you've done it. You've done the work. I think, think I just found I her wanna, on a folk playlist. I want to watch her recent concert with the St. Louis Symphony. I want to say she did kind of like oh, a dude. It was like maybe a few weeks ago. That sounds so and nice. Because this is a podcast, I'll just say I'll link it in the show notes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, it must be so nice to say that. Oh yeah, we're gonna link it in the show notes. So, what's keeping you, you know, sane? I, I know Newfangled. Do you guys get together now? What's are your what are your mm. what's your musical stuff? Tell me about your musical life. The musical life. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, we we get together. I mean, I see Jackson a lot, but we play disc golf. <laughs> nice. So we get outside. Musical life, though, man, it's it's kind of sparse these days. Um, Newfangle 4 has gotten together a few times with uh, some, like we've sung a few tags with like a, <laughs> a person, a fourth person on the disc golf course or like out, you know, just like at one of our places, but not really doing too much rehearsing. You know, I, we're, we certainly could be. <laughs> that's tags. That's on the been golf course. Is there anything better? Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like we did sing a tag with Lane Aiken. Um, but we got together with Ryan recently before it's public knowledge, I'm pretty sure Becca posted and that they moved to Texas. Um, moved. So, yeah. They picked it on up and they moved it on down the line. I'm an old cow The Tejas. Yeah, man. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta move to Texas. People do it. <laughs> i don't know yeah there's plenty of space out there yeah um i was looking at his place it looks it looks nice and quaint um and we but we sung outside of fantastic cafe after partaking in a lovely farewell breakfast and that was really fun you know it's it, it was bittersweet it was definitely like a bittersweet moment um because it was sort of like a well it's not the last time we're gonna sing together with ryan and you guys but, have done so many shows together because you guys do so much youth and harmony camp. You have done over these years so many camps. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really do miss that. I miss the shows. <laughs> I miss, I miss traveling, and you know, meeting people and shooting the bull with folks from all around the U.S. and just yeah, doing shows, performing in front of crowds. That's that's thrilling, man. I just missed that. But well, this we're is gonna... a good time for me to say, sorry to cut you off. This is a good time for no, me no. to say that the, the theme of this season of the podcast is to sort of stoke the fire for the festivals that are coming our way after we get to there, get to there. Mm-hmm. And I just like, oh, man, I just want to like ask maybe an open question, like what makes a really good acapella festival? Since you've been, you know, to these youth festivals as a, as a featured artist. Do you mean like festivals, like youth festivals, like <laughs> harmony, like youth and harmony type things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't have to like pick names or anything, like say which one's the best. Just no, no. One, so like a like what, are the, what are the elements that, you know, like make, make it happen? Honestly, I think, I mean, for one thing, it helps to have kids who want to be there you know like an excited gambit is that the right word (laughs) of singers 
I think that like in all the festivals that have been the most fun and like the most successful, it's that, so maybe, maybe it's like people coming prepared, you know, to make music together. Um, also leadership, the leadership involved. I think that is huge mm. because, you know, it's like you can, you can only get buys on so much if, if there's not that, uh, that spirit, you know, that's like spearheading the, um, the festival. And I'm thinking of multi-day, multi-day things. It's really important for everyone to be prepared if it's just a single day type thing, because you don't have that much time. <laughs> you should like you're granted uh, you know you're granted like maybe s seven hours of rehearsal eight hours like a chunk of three chunk of three chunk of two and then performance that night but like so it's really crucial that this the singers come prepared and i think that's what has made festivals that are a day long and multi-days long the most fun for everyone involved the singers and the um leadership can you extract it on like <clears throat> what that means exactly i mean you could probably mm -hmm. sum it up by saying well the, the so like music pragmatic. know what they're doing and they brought some students that are educated in music but um what personally have you found to be like really um really successful in these uh in this prep room? well i guess i can't like speak to any personal experience of preparing people because we're usually we usually brought in as like section leaders to shape the music and make sure, make sure that it's learned. But I know that when like learning tracks are sent out and there's check-ins, I think that helps a lot. Like accountability, yeah. you know what I mean? Check keeping the, keeping the, you know, keeping the participants accountable for their work. So they're not like just slipping under the radar. And then once they get there, they're, you know, uh what how does this go <laughs> it's hard to do that in a fun way check in and make sure people are doing their work but like not yeah 100 percent. <laughs> it really is and i think that comes back to like the the leadership like wanting as a student wanting to know your stuff so you don't let down your teacher or your leader oh yeah because you love them so much you know yeah, like when you have a great leader so inspiring that responsibility in your students and in the um sometimes it's not students sometimes it's you know full-grown adults <laughs> but yeah i i don't really have like any <laughs> groundbreaking information or thoughts on that but just coming prepared it's huge and then a willingness to work together too i mean that's that's just huge <laughs> willingness to get it done as a group and you know <laughs> that's just yeah that's like the the group thing is so is so crucial it's a group it's a team sport for sure i'm curious to know jake why you why you think um like two-day festivals work better than just a single day did i get that right yeah yeah i mean i think it really just comes down to time having more time because a lot of times these two-day festivals aren't doing more music than the one day festivals you know they're they're doing basically the same amount and so there's just more time to prepare and more time to get it down shape the music uh and also to have fun in the meantime you know so it's not all rehearsing there's time for bonding which is i also think is huge i think of somebody like uh just gonna put him on blast because he's awesome. Um, Cy Wood. Uh -huh. Do you know Cy? Yes, he was the baritone yeah. leader in Voices of Gotham when I was in New York. And, uh, I remember, oh heck yeah! I remember li liking his uh, his personality. It was pretty pretty strong. I liked him. Yeah, it's it's great. He's a theater guy, and so he's he does these you know uh, just icebreakers and games and. And things where you're organizing and you're talking and socializing and 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 lining up a certain way from like date of birth and that kind of stuff and but then like having to do it like without talking using your hands and so there's so many ways that he, that you can get a group to come together and like he does it so well 
He's so great. And he's a teacher. You know, that sounds like a rope like, course trick line up without talking. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm, <laughs> you say ropes course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. You know, when you're out in the woods and they're like, okay, uh, you guys have to get across this, uh, yes, get across this stream, but you only have this one bucket and you can't touch from here to here. Cause it's lava. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. this, uh pendulum. Dude. maybe try the pendulum, but Charles, you can also use the bucket now go. Oh, and all the other team did it in three and a half minutes. So do your best. <laughs> yeah then it's just chaos yeah i mean it's there's more time for stuff like that so it's just more fun and then the kids have fun and then and then they take have a break from the music and then we come back to the music and it's kind of sit there for a little bit it's kind of stewed in the brain and you pick up where you left off and it's just it's just not as uh it just doesn't seem as cramped ah uh, yes yes stewed it's spread out the brain that yes, is totally exactly. the thing we always i mean exactly how do, how do we it's magical really it's the the letting it simmer and stew in the brain yeah yeah because like you can like you can punch something a million times but if you do it really well for like you know 30 minutes and then you kind of break away and go do something else and then come back. It's yeah. Sometimes it's incredible. The amount of <laughs> like success you have just letting it kind of simmer. Sue stimmer. Right. Stimmer. Did I say stimmer? Simmer. Stimmer. But yeah. Simmering. <laughs> Stimulating the brain. It's stimulating and simmering, simmering in the brain. <laughs> Dude, you know who really turned but like up that? What did that, you say? How, how the simmering the stewing how it works i read this book actually recommendation from justin miller he sent me this book uh about how the synapses in your brain fire the myelinated sheath in your neural system yeah did you read this book i forget what it's called but it's a great no all about how the simmering works physically like the physiological specificity of that system Mm -hmm. and it totally works take a break let it simmer come back boom yeah does it does that does it talk about like practicing something in your mind like repeating it over and over and over and over and like carving these pathways yeah 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 carving the pathways yes the neural pathways yeah i remember him bringing that up because we had i forget what it was was during rehearsal and it was in reference to like free throws basketball players yeah yeah, maybe maybe that was in that book too. Is it the inner game, on inner game of music? Big chapter on sports. I might have. That sounds kind of like it. I thought it was like cracking the code or some, some code. Oh, okay. But yeah. Anyway, this is science. It's real. The the stewing. The take yeah. break. 100%. Yeah. So that's, there's there's time there. Recipe for a better festival when the students come prepared, but they also have time to stew. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you can come prepared and and like the music sounds great upon first run through but there's you know so much more to do and and so much of that maybe is not making music but it's time to play and get closer as a group which so is really go good on a scavenger hunt and size really good at that yeah <laughs> he's he's an incredible example of that and making people feel comfortable to open up and, and be silly which is sometimes hard to do but like, I've never, I don't know. I've never found that a problem with like choir kids. <laughs> like it's not, choir kids are naturally <laughs> just like, dude, Drama we're crazy. Birds all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. Good people. So, really good people, these choir nerds. Those are my scattered Probably. thoughts on that. If they're. Oh, that's great. Yeah, scattered's good. Yeah, I haven't thought about a festival in a long time. <laughs> like, I know, right? Oh, we missed it haven't. so much. Oh, I missed yeah, dude. Much. Yeah, I know. What's the last festival you did, Derek? Uh, I or mean, like attended or? I was, I was even in like it was March thirteenth. It was the last time I was. That was my last shift. I was working, mm. and then that was it. That was the end of the getting together and being around people. Yeah, it's coming we're coming back. back. It's coming back. Yeah. We're coming back. We're coming back, dude. Pasadena, twenty twenty two. Yeah midwinter yeah going to be oh yeah lit (laughs) and it's gonna be so unbelievably awesome 
Good. we're gonna be yeah we're gonna be staying up past midnight <laughs> dude i'm gonna have two root beers <laughs> at least at least two at least two rooted beers yes oh my goodness <laughs> yeah oh good times good times oh man i definitely so, want to be there for that dude yeah 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 yeah. Oh man. So wait. All right. So let's do some more Westminster reminiscing because after all, this is an official Westminster podcast. So yeah, you know. And if I was your Westminster down. history, tell me quickly. I joined the chorus in two thousand and eleven in the spring or the winter, rather, of two thousand ten, two thousand eleven. So like you joined then, the onset of 2011. 2011. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep, in Kansas City. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I I had a lot of fun <laughs> in that group because like it was just a good group. It was great synergy in the chorus. And I just remember Will Harris being a big old goof. <laughs> he is a big old goof. He is. And oh my goodness that was just it was great and i was intimidated because i was like well just no joey bus and a few other people you know and like west <laughs> i don't know when you first joined westminster but it's like you kind of have to like just kind of have to chill for a little bit and eventually you'll like be one of the crew <laughs> but agree, agree. Yeah, yeah yeah but it was so much fun and and i had uh was singing in masters first but then eventually i was like i have to sing with westminster for the swan song so i joined up and then um you know kept hanging around showing up knowing you know try, trying to know my music as best as possible and eventually what was our song what was our set list for the swan set for, for kansas city it was okay it was uh uh that simon and garfunkel it was bridge over troubled water bridge it was not daniel right it was sure on the shining night sure on the shining night yeah and then another one which i can't i don't i'm pretty sure is another one i can't think of it because your swan set wouldn't just be two songs unless it's like an epic uh medley of some sort we'll, we'll remember so then you did oh. the one song set, and then it was time to start newfangled four or no it was b-sides we were doing and it was yeah then it was b-sides yeah 11 and 12 was b-sides for sure okay mm-hmm. then you and i went to uh with those crazies up to santa cruz and we did a competition and that was we awesome did. i i man well, we did our at santa cruz. didn't we yeah didn't we do our competition in san francisco because we met you. I remember meeting you there at your apartment in San Francisco. That's right. We hung out in SF. And rehearsing. And then we did the Santa Cruz. I don't remember. But it's, oh man, it was such a good time. Because I remember when we competed, my high school coaches that coast, coached my high school quartet mm-hmm. were, were there at the at the competition. And I was like, ho, ho, ho. This is amazing. I haven't seen these people in so long. And now, <laughs> like the journey that they started me on has like taken me to win a gold medal with Westminster. Like amazing. It was so exciting. I have this awesome. Yeah. Time. And be just like one of the, you know, just one of the okay leads that's we've ever heard out there. It's just, oh, just okay. I, this, the, uh, so I joined in 2010 for the, for that contest run and so the chorus mm-hmm. was mirrored and well okay how do i say this there's a part in the choreo where we look to the center of the chorus and my, <laughs> the, pers- the person that's i'm i'm on the right of the stage the person on the left of the stage uh-huh. who's in the mirror position to mine is josh Sol- solomeyer and like i got like two seconds of just like checking in with josh every time we rehearse this and right just awesome because speaking of awesome leads or yeah people that deserve to be complimented on their excellent lead (laughs) that way josh solomon amazing singer the voice of liberty himself the voice of liberty himself yeah (laughs) what what a cool dude he's also into carpentry i found out Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. yeah, love that guy. Such a such a such a gentleman. What's a, just such a nice guy. Solomar. Yeah, I, I actually sang in a group with him. I was lucky enough to sing with Josh Solomar in a group before he went and became a super professional musician. We sung in the acapella group. Oh, Eric. you you were in a group with Josh. Did you know that? I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, it was me. Will Harris was in there. David Rakita was in there, and then a couple other guys and. A girl. <laughs> okay. What was that called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was called Wild Card. Wild Card. Because we were wild. <laughs> Where were you? What what does it mean? We're just wild. <laughs> I don't yeah, that was our name. I think we had a different name before, but we ended up being Wild Card. I'm guessing pop- yeah, and we were like, yeah, it was like a a cappella group that we wanted to uh put on the sing off. Oh, and right. we never made it, but we had fun rehearsing. We had fun. Love those guys. Love yeah, them. just that's the, just it was a it was a great time. And I was in college, I think. Yeah, that that was during New Fingle Four, but doesn't matter. Tolmeyer, love him, great singer. Yeah, as are you. I dig, I dig singing, you know, it's like I've benefited so much from the Westminster Chorus and I've learned so much. And I just, I wanted to go back to um, what you were talking about, just joining. Mm. I also felt very intimidated joining the chorus. And I also wondered like whether or not I was like able to yeah. sing with the chorus because no matter how, there's always some other skill to learn, no matter what artistic thing you're, you're, you're working on. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you could be the like you could be so like in shape vocally you could be in prime condition and yet <clears throat> there could be like some other musicianship knowledge that's like lacking you know like your ability to read well or your ability to blend well or your ability to be cool yeah people on the risers or you know there's all these different factors to being a an accomplished yeah, blending is Mm-hmm. yeah definitely and i just i remember being like with the chorus for the first few rehearsals and just being like i don't know if i'm good enough to be in this group <laughs> what <laughs> seriously Get out yeah dude because man there was there was some there was just a, a strong energy of excellence and it just that was it was a pervasive feeling to like be accepted and in, in mm-hmm. some really really cool that was a that was a crazy 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 talented group when you joined dude so talented and they had just got round of singers specifically the world so like everyone was just like so focused and prepared and dedicated Mm -hmm. and it was beautiful to be in that room doing the work even at 10 a.m on saturday or yeah (laughs) i miss those days because man did we rehearse hard like that chorus was working (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that's that that's definitely a work ethic that is is unmatched, I think. It's for, it's just so intense. <laughs> and how do we foster it, you know? How does we, how do we produce the next Westminster chorus, you know? That's an interesting question, right? Like how do I don't know, I'm not I've been I don't know either. I'm I'm like I haven't been in it for a bit and I, I feel <laughs> Yeah, I don't feel qualified to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish I knew the answer to that, but I mean, <sighs> well, I'm sure you'll get somebody on here who who can. I'll continue my investigations down. Yeah, <laughs> well, you should speak. Some, you. you should talk some more about your awesome just touring with Newfangled Four. Like, I know you guys did cruise ships. I know you did youth festivals. I know you did some. Well, big we only shows. did a we only did a couple cruise ships and when I buy a couple I literally mean two <laughs> okay, that's cool though I mean that is yeah. a cool experience it was fun it, it was super fun um it was a it was a learning experience let me say that because we were not I don't think we were as prepared coming back to prepared being prepared and making and that being the thing that makes uh performances successful we well, we were as prepared as we thought we needed to be, but we didn't have, I think, what made the cruise act. And that was a band. That was charts for band. 
it oh, was yeah. just us doing acapella and i think that was it just wasn't enough you know it wasn't enough like decibels and excitement for the cruise audience <laughs> enough uh, <laughs> extremeness yeah, exactly. yeah, i totally feel that you know what I mean? really have to be ex- we're living in the age of extreme still yeah it's gotta be more yeah up, louder crazier more gimmicks what's up with <laughs> singers one of them is a they're masked they're wearing costumes you know like yeah. there's, got, there's got there's gotta be some yeah reveal. And it was just Game we show. were so <laughs> like we just did our shows that we did on chapter shows albeit it was a little bit longer you know usually the sets we were doing on chapter shows was like 25 minutes we had to do 45 minute slot you know you know how it goes yeah and it just it just wasn't enough hits, I think. It wasn't enough hits, and we didn't have the band. The band was huge. Like, a- any act we saw, aside from, like, a Jersey Boys tribute type group, would they, and they had tracks, so even still, you know, just, like, the straight voices was a little bit rough, I and mean, we weren't on individual mics. Oh, I'm making it sound terrible. It was great. We had a great time. <laughs> yeah, it's a, um, it's an interesting... But, it's an interesting yeah your ships there i'm a candid guy derek you know I'm, a, I'm an honest man i know i know you are dude. that's what's so cool about you you're definitely <laughs> you're a real dude you're real you're a real cat uh, i appreciate i'm trying i'm trying to keep it real i really am so yeah next time if we ever do that again you know if we get picked up with a management company or you know booking agency you're gonna have to leave the charts. realness at the door no more real jake Turn it off. We're on a cruise ship now. No more reels. <laughs> Put on the wig, monkey dance. We That's want, right. <laughs> we want to see the pop music. We want the Beatles. We want the Beach Boys. We want the Eagles. That's what we want. <laughs> Let's talk more rock. But Don't I actually rock. had to take us to the chorus. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, I actually had an idea about like a show for a quartet. A quartet's through the years was the idea. So you would go through like for freshmen mills brothers uh ink spots then like beach boys beatles eagles you know quartets are like vocal harmonies through the years but there's so much to pick from you know if you think about like pop and pop rock groups and just do it do a review you know do a review show of oh yeah oh yeah vocal harmony people mm-hmm. love it. what is it yeah vocal harmony that people love so much i think oh man I saw, I don't know if you were there for this, but I got a chance when when Barbershop International Festival was. When Barbershop was just beginning in, in 1930. <laughs> back in the old days. No, in, uh, in uh, uh, gosh, Salt Lake City at the Mormon Tabernacle. Not in the Tabernacle, at the like convention center. On the, mm-hmm. on the Sunday following convention. Um, oh, I was there, not for that, but I was still in Salt Lake City. They did a okay, so it was a it was it was a just you remember that venue, right? It's yeah, like, it that venue was unbelievable. Like so, yeah, you didn't great. need mics. Yeah. I mean, you didn't really need them. How did it sound on stage over there? Was it it was great. It, it was so amazing. It, like I liked that it was kind of live, and we were getting you're getting some feedback from the freaking rows and rows of pews behind you in the organ so not feedback like pew, but like you're getting some <laughs> verb and stuff which is nice so, was great. so that sunday the vocal majority did a concert with the tabernacle choir mm, and mm-hmm. dude it was unbelievable it was so rad and they had a full like symphonic band opening for them with like i don't know 45 pieces or something really so it was so cool dude and it was you know church it was happening in church time and i was mm-hmm. you know, i didn't sleep that saturday night i just like wandered in there after breakfast and <laughs> so cool man <laughs> and I, and then also I, I watched the taping like i was like why isn't anybody in here and then i realized uh. after they were done performing they were like that was just the televised performance recording and now we'll do the real concert and then like in the next like 10 minutes like oh the whole place just filled up yeah because you didn't sleep so you went to the early one yeah it just wandered in there at uh, everyone else was asleep 
Yeah, well, everyone else was, I don't know, doing what you do before church, getting ready, eating breakfast, whatever. But uh, sure, yeah, sure. it was a, man, what what an amazing, I know it was really muddy on the tabernacle stage, though. What was that like for you guys? Um, it, it wasn't oh, the tabernacle stage. I mean, I don't remember anything being unpleasant, you know, but I'm like, really, I'm, I'm not, you know, if, if you can hear if we can hear ourselves in the monitors that kind of thing and i'm happy <laughs> like i don't remember anything being unpleasant i think there was talks about that where it was yeah did you hear that in the tabernacle? It, was still, it was kind of weird in the tabernacle like at certain points it was like real muddy but like yeah this is in the cathedral still, right in in the tabernacle itself yeah not the not the venue or the, or the temple right temple i believe oh gosh what the heck are the names i don't know well, the temple, yeah, the Mormon either, temple. I thought like, Salt Lake City had a lot to offer as a, a venue. I, know, I liked that place. Oh, that was good. And then yeah. there was the scooters, too, and we, like, got to scooter around. Dude. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Remember You're that? cracking me up right now, because, yeah, Salt Lake City was the was the convention of the scooter. <laughs> that was a good convention. Yeah, that was, a, that was a great one to go out on. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of conventions, we don't get to have one this summer, and I'm so bummed. And it's it's uh it's nightlife's 25th year. Mm. I remember getting a nightlife CD in college, and I just played the heck out of that CD. And or 96, was... sorry, <laughs> I'm a dingus. Isn't it right? <laughs> Isn't never, it 20, it's 25, right? 25. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. I was, so, I was like, of... congratulations to nightlife. You guys are awesome. And I just remember listening to that record over and over and over and over and over again. I just love the heck out of it. It's so good. Did you, did you big uh, nightlife at all? You like nightlife, Jake? I like nightlife. I, I will be honest. I didn't listen to their CDs uh, too much because I was just turned on to like the newer stuff. But like, but then I was listening to like Michigan Jake and stuff. And yeah, I just never listened to nightlife. But I did hear them live a few times, and it was always enjoyable to you know freaking freaking jeff dude jeff baker yeah those guys you know are, bless they're, him they're southern california heroes from the bar yeah they're definitely legends in Legend. the far western district yeah and uh john's a scene i've sang a couple tags with john's a scene and like that dude he's just he is a human vocal fold it's pretty amazing <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome that whole quartet i mean yeah because then you have brett littlefield who's a human freaking organ good at singing bass and he's yeah. got he's got he's just he's like he in a lot of ways like really mm -hmm. he's really got like everything that you could want out of a bass you know not just the great instrument but also just some really like like when he coaches westminster i remember him just yeah, he's so like what the heck is it about the guy he's just like it's not he's a great coach he's yeah, got he's, that he's direct and he's got that i'm gonna i'm gonna deck you if you don't do this yeah kind of <laughs> the accountability he he hands yeah. up the accountability yeah. yeah no brett's coached newfangle four a few times too and and but like it wasn't it wasn't just like you know tough love it you know it was very much then there was like the soft thing where it's like, you know, I, I'm rooting for you and I, and I have your back, you know, that kind of thing. So it's very, it's both sides of it. Yeah. It's definitely a great leader. I don't know if he's, was he like a coach or teacher at one point in his life? I don't know. I don't know. His, his, his outside of barbershop world. Remains. We need to. <laughs> what does, I think, I think what's, he's, what's uh, he do? I think he has a, uh, I don't know. Uh, but I, I think he's a, uh, he's a, um, a what do you call him a, a nut a, a nut produce broker <laughs> i think he's so oh, i thought you were just gonna stop stuff. i thought you were gonna stop at nut and i was like <laughs> brett brett's coming for you i just remember the first time that i like hung out with saying tags with that uh guy and uh we like went out to, of the tgi friday to so, like ring some tags and mm -hmm. i was like oh here comes this gentleman and he was like would you mm -hmm. believe me <laughs> he looked, it was very confrontational I, this is a good type of humor this 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 bread loaf. yeah dig that guy congratulations to nightlife on your 25 years way to go yeah maybe maybe they'll do something you know maybe I, they they have to. I think they're gonna be on the westminster 
summer show mm. gonna happen oh. this summer mm. oh yeah what okay hey, yeah that's what i'm told First i'm hearing about that oh they're gonna be there so it's gonna be cool i guess we'll see i thought that they might have done something with cleveland where they flew they flew people out and just had the quartets perform you know on a, into an empty room or something but maybe costs just you know it was not worth it maybe i'm not sure Oh man, I don't even know what there's a free about any of these because then you can't really do like a free webcast. Yeah, you know, then you're just losing so much money. But you know, <clears throat> last summer the AIC show was off the chain. It was so yeah, good. that was I was, that was sick. at the amount of of quality performance that that they were able to produce. Yeah, <laughs> it was awesome. It was so really uh, innovative. I will say that it was super innovative and it, there was some amazing performances <laughs> like way to make it happen during the hardest of times was the best. I think they, cause they did a live and oh they did gosh. like a pre-recorded bit. And yeah. I thought that was did you, awesome. Did you see, did you see their funny? Like they did some funny bits. <laughs> they did. They were really funny. I'm pretty sure it's on YouTube too. Like I, I watched it again. <laughs> I just cracked up. Like they're playing. Uh, we could talk about it, but the, just people just, just go watch it. We can you just go watch it if you haven't seen it. Later. Yeah. Good show. I love it. Way to go, AIC. You guys did it. I know you're, you're I, I'm just hats off. I'm amazed mm. at that organization's their Hell yeah. commitment to get stuff out the door last summer was just like we i was i was expecting way less awesomeness than they produced mm-hmm. so cool so cool yeah it was great did you watch it with anyone we've been having watch parties here at the house and nice. i don't know because i know we had a party for a socially distanced party uh for <gasps> the westminster christmas show and is there an event nice. even in between <laughs> summer? Maybe and like, winter. maybe like, um, th- there was a there was a barbershop Christmas show. There was like an AIC Christmas show. I definitely watched that stuff. I watched the AIC. We had the AIC Christmas show party. That was that was sweet in my garage here. My garage. Oh my god. Nice. Do like, you keep the, the garage open? Oh yeah. Keep okay. Well, that's, that's open. It's relatively <laughs> safe. There's some nice airflow. You know, I'm, I'm not too worried about you. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a good hang for sure and uh man when it comes back in pasadena pasadena 2022 baby oh it's gonna be so awesome oh i'm just i'm gonna be so pass pasadena we need to write tags for the occasion you know because like you jake you Mm -hmm. need to pop that tag that rasmus wrote that everybody thinks you wrote <laughs> no, he knows. <laughs> I'm so grateful for him, literally, because that's he's the only reason the tag is like spread because he started teaching it. So he's a good I'm teacher. So grateful that Rasmus picked that up because <laughs> he's a heady cat. That right? Mm-hmm. Oh, cool cat, man. What a guy. What a guy. Oh man. Yeah, he's a he's good dude. <sighs> Sweet fun, fun, fun guy. Sweet, the Swedish just the whole the whole incorporating education their whole mm-hmm. their whole outlook on how how education works in society is just brilliant i know can we do that <laughs> oh, gee. all right let's not get off the barbershop <laughs> you know i don't want to, there's you know the thing is like so <clears throat> another westminster connection is michael dawson do you remember this dude mm-hmm. yeah yeah an irish fellow have you listened to his? <laughs> we his, hung out. The, the Irish fellow. Uh, we did. Yeah. Have you listened to his um, uh, podcast that his institute started? He's not the host of the podcast, but his the no program that he started now that he's gone back to Ireland. Uh huh. It's called. No, I haven't listened to it. Irish Institute of Music and Song. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know about it because I, I know that like. Um, couple friends that we newfangled for tour with are involved with it like becky gilbert and it's a good hang man that 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 place that they're starting yeah it's not belfast it's a bell is it dublin it's not dublin it's like some 
like they talk about it on the podcast like our, our, we picked this place because it's like Belgrade yeah, like, no well, not, not Belgrade it's, <laughs> and you'll have to listen to the podcast to, listen, Serbia. to find out where they started this uh, Irish Institute of Music and Song link to it in the show notes Derek and it's so awesome what the heck was I, I think it's about I think Bob? it's in Dublin I think it's in Dublin dude not in Dublin no they oh, ba- Balbriggan 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh man, such okay. a good listen. Is Dublin a county? I... County Dublin? Not what is Dublin in? No. How Ireland works. Hold on, hold on. We can do this. This is just a Joe Rogan podcast. We can look stuff up right now. Okay, look it up. Look it up. Uh, we pull that up. Let's see. That one can we pull that up? Yeah, it's, yeah. County Dublin is one of the is one of the counties. Just like County Cork. So it's in county. Dublin. It's in the county. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Belbringen. By Surrounding the, the capital city of Dublin. So, so it must be like doing, a... They're doing festivals over there. They're yeah. start rocking choir festivals. Oh man, I really want to go. I do too. I want to go back. It's so much fun, dude. That was so much incredible. Did you go to Ireland? Yeah, we went to Ireland, dude. We went to Ireland in... 2019 it was one of our last trips was oh, man. Tell me about in it. the in the fall dude we just <laughs> we i can't believe it happened i am still when i think about the fact that you know we got asked this, these four guys that we you know decided to come together saying we got asked to go to ireland and tour around for a week blows my mind lady barbalade the quartet over there lady barbalade they're like super well known and doing great things for barbershop in Ireland. Um, they reached out to us and they did a parody of frozen of, do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> but it was, do you want to go to Ireland? <laughs> da, 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 dee, dee. And it's like, go get your fresh, your finest suit. And then do, 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 we'll fly right now. <laughs> it's ridiculous. We, we have it. I think it's in our messages or something, but it might be public they might have made it public but it was great and we were just like uh yes please tell us when and we will come right away so yeah we went in october i believe Um, and did you go to belbriggan did you go to the irish institute of music and song i don't think so i don't think so no we went to man we went to freaking all kinds of places on like each we went to Dublin, we went to Cork, uh, we went up like North area, not to Northern Ireland, but um, yeah, we, we, we did about five shows, I think. And they sang a set, we sang a set, we did a combined number at the end. It was so much fun. I mean, it was just, the, the, the crowds came out, like the cities came out and it was so, incredible and then like after every show we had guinness we had we had local guinness <laughs> yeah and it was so good, so good. Oh. it was so good oh the good stuff it hits different man the guinness hits different over there something about it i don't know if it's like a copyright thing or some sort of recipe that they have to alter but it's uh it's different do you think it's better ireland Mm-hmm. New fame with Ireland. <laughs> well, my friend, I feel like we might be coming to the end of the podcast here. Let's see how much time have we recorded. Is that in the, we're taking it into the end zone here? Yeah, I think take it into the end zone, you know, take it home. I mean, you and I could reminisce about the time we went to go see James Taylor. That was awesome. Yeah, James Taylor. Talk about Sweet Harmonies. Oh, man. Good show. I was disappointed that Bonnie Ray didn't do the opening, but I liked Cheryl Crow. I thought she was good. Yeah, she was great. And she talked about having like a crush on him and that kind of thing. It was like, yeah, it was good. Pretty, not, pretty not charming and adorable. Good, but, but good. No, no, but she's still rocking. Yeah, it was good. Was cool. And yeah. then James Taylor played the hits and started like crying when he played Fire and Rain. And I was like, oh, God. So good, dude. Yeah. An American legend. I am going to be. Oh man, I'm gonna miss that guy. Hope he goes. 
He's yeah, a- some of these uh, singer-songwriter cats from the 60s and 70s, man, it's getting pretty late. He's, Damn, pretty yeah, he's he's 72, you know, so. It's not that old, but it's, you know. No, 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 no. Going, going to get into the part of life where you're like, yeah, you know, could keep touring or I yeah. could uh, become Dude, a his- or something. Stay yeah up. his voice i mean is crazy for being he's actually 73 but his voice is almost the same as it was like like 40 years ago you know it's nuts or 50 years ago like when he recorded some of the stuff he recorded when he was like 23 24 that is true and not it's everybody can wild. say that they sound as good no I mean, he did sound quite good he did you know he took care of himself. He did some, yeah. He did some organic veggies or what have you. I mean, <laughs> he did. He definitely did. Yeah. He seems like he cares. But. Maybe you'll maybe you'll be a you know, maybe you'll be a provider of organic fare to him one day. Who knows? That sounds cool. I'm down. I'm I'm down for bringing musicians. I know you're working on a, a garden there. I'm down for bringing music, you know, like the thing I'm knowing, I'm learning, you know, about working in a garden is the sun goes down and you stop like you don't want to stop and mm-hmm. music in the barn or whatever <laughs> to like soothe your like i don't want to stop <laughs> you know you nice. kind of have to let you need like some transitional yeah. thing and music does that um and you can also work while you're singing which is something that sadly i think has been lost uh in yeah years because it's just well, I'm sure we all could guess, but I think it's mostly the uh, <laughs> the, the 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 radio in your pocket is just so much more entertaining and so yeah. much faster <laughs> exactly. than like offering an opportunity to sing a song while you're working on something. But yeah, I I I, I think that you know these there's a real nice. spiritualism in work tending to a task that you know wrote and your hands are just doing the thing and you're free mm-hmm. to sing a verse <clears throat> yeah like, i think it's nice it's like an extra little extra yeah, it's like part of the day yeah. mm-hmm. it's like it's like washing dishes or something like that and you're just yeah. like i'm gonna tune to yourself you yeah. don't have to think about your work you're just going along with it i'm pretty sure it's normal in some parts of the world yeah 100 yeah. percent and not a weird like what do you you know yeah this person's crazy what are they doing why are they just singing (laughs) (laughs) or like odd or even like kind of fun but kind of like easily dismissed yeah like all right just you kind of you're annoying us now (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah the bummer i guess like the way the 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 barbershop society the language that they use to describe that is that we're not a culture of joiners anymore that was like the rhetoric Mm. they used i remember feeling deeply about that because it's kind of true like we are not a culture of joiners like yeah more so a culture of keeping the blinders on yeah sort of just like isolating maybe not isolating you know but not joining in together which is why we have theater to remind us that it's okay to just burst into song sometimes and there's totally going to continue to be those beautiful yeah. humans who love nothing more than to burst into song dramatically and oh, <laughs> yes just do it man i freaking oh. love theater and i miss going to a show oh man <laughs> I going to show dude I, like that is something that moves me viscerally like nothing almost like nothing else can dude <laughs> it's just musical scary. theater is so rad oh it's crazy it's crazy you should do that's your next podcast musical theater yeah so I, you could talk about that i uh i'm just i'm, I'm it's so it, that is an american art form too broadway music mm-hmm. and it's Truly. i mean i'm not a historian i'm sure it has a lot of roots and all that mm-hmm. but like Ain't no place like New York and Broadway. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it is so amazing. Like yeah. walking through a crowd 
in Times Square or near the theater district on Friday night with thousands of people all going to the theater together and it's like 20 minutes to curtain and everybody's just like gotta get inside yeah. gotta see the show gotta get the yeah dude just like the energy is like oh, yes. oh yes. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a, a, a vibrant energy that's pulsating up like through the hearts and minds of the people just so healthy just such a healthy wonderful human experience. yeah working together symbiotic relationship yeah the last okay i don't want to keep going you could yeah, just say your thing say the just thing. the last show i saw i got stand up uh standing room only for book of mormon and it was hilarious that's a good show it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a it is a show of many many facets <laughs> that train train matt uh humor that like yeah you've Just seen cuts it cuts at everyone you've seen uh what the heck's the name of that cannibal the musical right no no oh man you gotta dial that up okay their high school or it's either their high school or college like film program that they like okay. to like get a like get a grade on it might be the like finals project I'm pretty sure oh, i've seen cool. that like i haven't seen it but i'm pretty sure it's college i i think it's their college project it's awesome yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so awesome for being just like shot on a camcorder <laughs> like it's it's brilliant really and uh yeah listeners if you haven't had a chance to check out cannibal the musical just dial it in for the youtubes you know check it out well all right um that's it so uh jake thanks thanks for being here my friend and uh and yeah, it's my when do pleasure. I get to see when do I get to see you next? What's your next big adventure? You gotta leave us with your promotional thing, you know? Yeah, just putting positivity out in the world and knowing where the bad stuff exists and trying to help improve that. Nice, dude. Yeah. All right. Well, with that, uh, I call this podcast done. <laughs> <laughs> love you, man. Love you, Derek. Dude, I love you too.